Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance. Let's watch. I love doing hobbies with him. And that's why I'm taking an interest in it so much. My friend Alex is a professional model. She asked Ed to take some photos of her. And I thought she'd be a good fit because it would make me feel a little bit more loosened up working with someone that we already know. I really want to learn and ask questions. All right, that's actually really positive and sweet of her. Not everyone has to do this, but he, she is saying she wants to share a hobby with Ed, with her partner. And she is thinking, well, maybe we could both do photography together and that'll be an opportunity to have some fun together. And yeah, uh, there's a lot of wisdom to that. It doesn't always work out and there's landmines to avoid, but it's, you know, it's a worthy goal to have. So I'm at 396, I'm gonna drop it to 380. Again, these are just numbers to you, but what I'm trying to do is just correct my light. Um, it's a lot easier when um, your subject's beautiful. All right, well, that's kind of cute. Do that again, okay, nice, okay. Kind of lean into it, kind of just- Okay, so it's hard to know what the right thing to do here. It's a new area for the two of them. It's not, I wonder what my wife would say actually about this because she was a professional model and is still, but was a professional model primarily for her job for 20 plus years, 25 years and has a lot to say about these kinds of scenes. And I wonder what she would say. I'm, I'm guessing based on what she said in the, in the past is that it's not s super normal for a photographer to talk about how beautiful you are. It's a pr it, the, the thing that I really, the message I really get from Stacy is that it's way more professional and buttoned up than is typically portrayed in movies and TV and the media. It is a professional environment. Everyone knows what they're supposed to do. It's not about commenting on your uh, looks or hitting on you. You know, that's the, the assumption or that's often what's portrayed is that the male photographer is a lech. He's a creep and is at the very least secretly thinking things, but often it will come out. And from what Stacey will tell me is just like, no, it's, just, it's, it's work. You're, you're at work and you're, you're doing your stuff and everyone is under contract to give a certain product and they're not thinking about that sort of thing. Plus, it's inappropriate to ha insert that into the workplace. And most people understand that. Some people don't. So he says to her, oh, it's, you know, it's good. Now, some photographers, from what I understand, including Stacy, because she's now also a photographer, will do what they can to help the subject relax, to help the model relax. They might compliment, say, oh, that looks great, that kind of thing, because especially if you, I think if you sense tenseness that's not helping the situation, you might actually say something nice, like you're beautiful or something like that. So he says that, it's hard to know what the appropriateness is of that. And then she, you know, they pan to her, Liz, and this is Liz, Liz's friend, so I don't know. But anyway, they pan to Liz, and Liz is supposed to be miffed about that, but we don't really know what's going on in her head. And I would hope that they would have a conversation, that Ed would say, so by the way, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Now, another thing that a lot of people were saying, this goes way back to the first season he was on because he had all those pictures in his house that he's a creep and he's a groomer and all these kinds of allegations. And I don't, you know, I didn't really have an opinion about it. If someone really loves their art as I think he does and he, uh, you know, frames them and puts them in his house, say like, this is what I did. Now it's a little tone deaf when you're dating and some people be like, so, all these women are look in uh, hardly any clothing. And again, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but it could be maybe not their preference. So you would think about your partner. I don't see those anymore. They haven't really done a pan around his house, but I suspect those don't really exist anymore. And remember he was single for 30 years. So maybe he just wasn't used to considering that. But anyway, so, I would just hope that they would have had a conversation like, this is gonna happen, I hope that you're okay with that. Would you like me to curb that a little bit? Let's see how they manage. Just have some fun, play with the camera. Hello, nice. I definitely came into this hoping that I was gonna learn 
um, some techniques, but I'm definitely feeling like Ed is just showing off. So, okay, that's interesting. That first bit, I'm like, well, it could be hard for him to teach you while he's essentially working. There's a lot to keep track of when you're doing what he's doing. Also, he might be a terrible teacher. It's not automatic just because you're proficient at something. And I don't know how really proficient he is, but I would say most people are poor instructors. They're poor teachers. It's really a skill. As a professor myself, it took me a while to really kind of figure it out. And I, it's kind of weird. People in my profession often have never taken a class on how to teach. I'm a professor. I've been a professor for 25 years. I've never been to a training. I've taken no classes. I've probably never even read a book or an article on how to teach. Just imagine that, right? That we would allow people to teach without any training in a very important field. Now, it's, it's changing as time moves on, but uh, that's the case for me, and that was often the case. That doesn't mean I'm a terrible professor. I, I would like to think that I'm not, but I had to learn on my own. I had to learn the hard way. I, I had mentors and supervisors and would also watch other people teach and would take the good, you know, I would sort of, oh, I like that. Oh, I don't like that. I better not do that. And I would learn over time and just would refine my teaching style. And so there's that. But anyway, the point is, is that not everyone is automatically a good teacher. It's really kind of a process. And the little bits that we've seen, yeah, he's a terrible teacher. He's just like throwing numbers out. And then he kind of realizes, he's, you know, he's talking about f-stops and speed and everything and ISO. And she doesn't know anything about that sort of thing. And he's like, well, these are just numbers to you for now. Now, on the other hand, maybe she should take a class. The kind of photography that I think she wants to be good at, I don't think Ed is actually good enough to teach her those things. You know, there are classes that people can take and there's, you know, other people you can, there's, I'm sure there's YouTube videos that would supplement that. Anyway, I don't know. It just seems like this is haphazardly thrown together. I think it's possible that Ed does like photography because he does get to flirt with women. I just really thought that he'd be engaging more with me. Right. So the other thing she said earlier was, I think he's just showing off. We don't know what's really happening, but I think we could trust her judgment of the vibe. She doesn't seem to come across as someone who's often distorted. So well, let's go with that, that he is showing off. You know, what does that mean exactly? I, I could take a guess. And then... She says, I think he was a photographer because it gave him an excuse to flirt. I could see that being true. I hadn't really thought about that before. I'm sure many other people did because I tend not to think along those lines. But yeah, I could see that given his personality. I wouldn't say it's creepy or harassment or something. But I mean, if he is flirting, then that is inappropriate and, and potentially harassment. But... I So how, how do we frame this? He's lonely and feels like no one will ever like him. Maybe he feels unattractive. I don't know. He sets out, and we could imagine other people being like this as well in various different professions. He seeks out to become a photographer, not because he's actually 100% interested in the art form. Uh, maybe he is a little bit. But he's like, oh, you know, this would be a good opportunity to meet some women. And I'm not going to uh, necessarily be with them because they don't want to. But, it, but I'll have contact with beautiful women, which makes me feel good. At least I can have contact through that venue. Um, so, uh, you know, I could see him being that way, again, particularly given that or if we assume that he was refraining from dating because he felt like there was no possibility of it working out for him. You know, there'd just be this little bit of need being met. A, a, a common similar behavior that people will engage in is going to strip clubs, to exotic dancer places, or other kinds of uh, things like that as a substitute for contact and affection and closeness. They want to have closeness with someone in the real world, but things aren't going well or they don't believe that it will ever happen. And so they can approximate at least elements of it in these venues by paying money. And that's not wrong or unhealthy. It can be, but it's, you know, it's, it's not, it, it's a fine sublimation. It, it can maybe carry you over or I don't know. There's just a lot of different ways of looking at it, but he 
might have been doing that. That's the way I'll say that. Now, I will say, like I said, I want to really drive this home, that if he is being inappropriate and he is giving off a vibe of flirt, because, you know, you're a model and I don't know how he f finds people to take pictures of, if they reach out to him or who knows, but you show up to a photo shoot expecting it to be a certain way and then you're getting a vibe from the photographer that there's emotional flirting romantic sexual needs that he's uh, putting on you in the room at, or even later on maybe he calls people up at, you know i don't the point is, is if that happens then yes that is creepy that is immoral you're tricking someone you're deceiving them there'd be nothing wrong with saying hey I, I am a flirty photographer i like to flirt with people does anyone want to allow me to flirt with them while i take pictures of them as long as there's no power differential you know like some people are like yeah okay i, I don't mind you can flirt with me or uh, that'd be fun or whatever you know but you, you can't suck people in on one idea and then while they're trapped in your photography studio you come at them with this other thing it, you know, it's, it's sexual harassment it's, it's not okay so there's that so she's saying showing off so she, he's showing off to her the friend and he's just using it as an excuse to flirt all right now there's a possibility that he did do that and no longer really wants to but he's in a habit about doing that, and so he's still kind of doing that. I don't know, but yeah, I, I could see this being an issue. And I guess if we were to make this more universal to, because it's not a common situation, but I think a, a more common situation is that if you are someone who tends to date a lot, then when you enter into a long-term relationship, a lot of you intellectually and emotionally might be totally okay with sacrificing the flirting and the dating and the the options the door being open and you commit yourself to someone and you're like yes i'm in i love this person i want to be with them but there might be parts of you that are still that you're unaware of that are that still want to hold on to that not that you don't want to be with your partner but you haven't fully adjusted to the reality of being fully committed, especially if it's a behavior that isn't or a situation that doesn't happen very often. So I'm trying to think of a of an example. Say that you when you drink with your guy friend, you're a guy and you're heterosexual and you're committing yourself and you're like, yep, totally in it to win it. And then you go drinking with your friends or something. And that isn't very often. Say you do that every six months or something. And it's the first time you've been fairly intoxicated after being committed to your partner. And your, your body and mind, especially under intoxicated, under an intoxicated state, is used to flirting and possibly even considering being with other people. And then you get drunk and one thing leads to another and you're thinking, what just happened? It, but you didn't know to be cautious about the drinking, to be cautious about this option, even though it's out of your awareness, it, it's inside of you, you know, that kind of thing. It doesn't mean it's okay, but it just means to have some preparation. So it's possible that that's happening for Ed now. I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff out there. Okay. Drop your chin all the way down. Nice. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Breathe. See how you can, there's like a vertical line right through her eyebrow, through the kind of the front of her chest. I look for a line. That's my style, not yours. But you might find different things that work for you. Okay. So that's actually teaching. I, I, I don't know how useful it is, but that's some instruction or tips. And he's clear. It's like, well, that, that's what I look for. But obviously you don't have to look for that. So you know, I'll give him kudos for that. It looks like she has no neck. No, no, it doesn't. Well, like here. I mean, that's just my no, thought. It, it no. looks like... Yeah, don't ever say that in front of her. No, no okay. there's nothing wrong with this picture at all. Okay, so then she says, it looks like she has no neck. All right, uh, you know, we don't know how long the conversation was, and they just sort of took that out, but okay. You know, she's stating her opinion, and he's like, eh. Now, I would hope that he would say, oh, okay, so that's how you see it. Eh, that's not how I see it. Everyone can see art differently. Okay, well. You're not here to critique my work. No, no. I'm trying to well, teach you what I'm doing. I'm not critiquing I'm trying to tell you what I like. Right, but it's what the model wants. Okay. And then I've just, you know, I've done this long enough where I know, but. 
Yeah, uh, yes, I, th I think they're both coming from a rational, understandable place. She's trying to interact in her way. She's like, oh, I don't like this picture because of this and that. And then he is saying, okay, well, that's your opinion, but it's not necessarily the opinion. But the way he's now escalating it to you essentially saying you don't know what you're talking about and you need to shut up is, you know, it's going far. As sweet as she is, this has a hard time being told what to do. She wants instant gratification. Like she wants to be able to take a perfect picture like right now. But photography is a lot of work. This is just you being oh natural. Oh my God. That's just you being natural. See, it's easy. I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> okay, uh, it's hard to know the whole span of their relationship, but he says that she wants things now. That's not what I'm seeing, but they're not showing us everything that's happening. So I think if I was to take a guess based on what we're seeing, total speculation for him, he is orienting himself towards the model, perhaps because that's what you do when you're trying to do this kind of work. You can't really be distracted by this other element. And he's really interested in trying to give her a good product, the, the model, and it takes a lot of concentration. It, there's a certain flow to it of taking a good picture and there has to be kind of good energy in the room. You can't have uh, certain emotional elements because it could screw things up for everyone, including the model. So maybe he's thinking along those lines. He also could be thinking along the lines of, hey, they're, you know, I'm used to flirting with these women, stay out of my way, I'm a charmer, or this is part of my thing, I don't know, it, it, I'm sure a lot of people think that's what's happening, but, and I think that's what she thinks is happening, but I'm not seeing overt uh, evidence of that, because remember, I, I think what this is for is that for the model, she, she wants pictures to be taken for her own purposes, it seems that way to me. And so she's not really interested in having other people, uh, you know, get in the way, or at least it would be rational for Ed to consider that. Now, he is speaking down to her in some pretty uh, horrible ways, and there's so many other ways he could be saying what he's saying. And it just makes me, it's reminding me of other ways that he would talk to her. And I've forgotten it, I guess, to some extent because of, we haven't seen anything like that this season yet. So I, I wonder, I don't know. I, I, it's just hard to know what's really happening here. It just, it, is this just an unfortunate misunderstanding? Is this indicative of Ed being a jerk face? I don't know, what do you think? You know, part of my job is to build the model's confidence, saying she looks like she has no neck. It's just unprofessional. And right, that, that's what I was saying. I think if you're an experienced photographer, you know what it's like to have a, an insecure model, to have an insecure subject who is unsure of themselves and it shows in the product. So it, yeah, it makes sense, but you don't have to talk to your partner that way. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, I have a feeling that the friend, because this is Liz's friend, is not paying any money for this. I'm just gonna take a guess, maybe she is, but it sounds more just like a, like a hobby thing. And, and thus, if you're Ed, you could be like, well, I'm not really trying to be professional here. We can, you know, we can slow down a little bit. And I agreed to have Liz come and I was gonna teach her. I mean, presumably that was a conversation. So I should, um, you know, take a beat and at the very least speak nicely to her. I mean, there'd be nothing wrong with him saying, look, I, I totally hear you, but I'm kind of in the zone right now. And so I'm so sorry, but uh, I'm just gonna be doing this. And then we can talk after, like after this whole thing done, we can we can go over everything. But for right now, it's sort of messing me up. It's not your fault. You know, there's another way you could say it. And that kind of pissed me off. And I'm sure Liz didn't mean to, but um, I get teased about my neck all the time. So I'm a little sensitive to that. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. So Liz, Liz was saying the picture looks like she has no neck and that triggered him. Okay, I, I could see that. I mean, there's not a, a, a rational co connection to that, but you could imagine what he's been through in his life. I mean, I, I've just, in what I've observed, what people have said about him online is enough to give someone a complex and you just imagine it's been present for a long time for him. So babe, you wanna, the camera's set, 
You can just have fun. <laughs> I think that you didn't use your two ears. <laughs> Yeah. To listen. Babe, you're the student. I'm training you. You didn't train me. The whole time you were training her. It took me 18 years to get here. Well. All right. So, again, we're not seeing the whole interaction. We don't know everything that happened. But he was about to hand the camera over to her, and he was, I think, being pleasant. And then she says, you're not training me. You've been training her. You know, one thing for her to say You've been a jerk face to me, which I think he has, at least the clips that we've seen. But it's another thing to say, you are training her. Like, uh, well, it's hard to know what she means by that. But, okay, so if you're Ed, you would say, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Are, are you hurt by, you know, uh, hey, excuse us. Let me have a conversation. So hopefully they can pull out of the nosedive. You're not listening to how I feel. You didn't really teach me anything. Okay. So. Sorry, babe. You okay? Here, let's look at these again. So. <sighs> okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate. So Liz is upset. Maybe not being fair. I don't know. Or there's some unfairness to it. I don't know. Are we seeing that Liz has an issue with this, and or? Are, is her reaction at least based on understandable uh, behavior from, from Ed? And then, so if you're Ed, on one hand, you could, you'd could be like, okay, let's call the whole thing off. I, obviously, me and my uh, uh, partner are having an issue, so excuse us. I'm gonna, so he could have done that. But on the other hand, you could say, look, I'm sort of on the job here, and you just had a reaction, so okay, but I'm gonna return to honor what this person showed up to, you know, have happen. So I, I'm gonna return to that. I, you know, I don't know. I'm guessing a lot of people look at this and think that he's an absolute a-hole for doing this because it certainly has the optics of him flirting and preferring her over Liz and how cold-hearted he is, and that could be what's happening it's just i don't know it's just hard to know what really happened because i i have a feeling they were there for you know an hour or two and they're showing us like three minutes of it so it's just hard to tell oh my gosh stunning alex i'll see you tomorrow okay that's what i'm talking about i really like that you're pretty Thank so you. it's 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 easy like Thank it makes you. my job that a lot was easier so fun. Ed doesn't care about my opinions, and I don't feel like Ed's being a good partner right now. Yeah, I think I could agree with that. I don't know. It, it just looks to me like there was some tension and some misunderstandings, some hurt feelings on both. So I, I, I think I would, if they were to come in to my office and describe this, I think I would see this as the way I usually see it, which is the usually what I believe to be the accurate conceptualization, which is that... Who cares about who's mostly to blame? Mistakes were made on both sides. Uh, people, both people had reasons, legitimate reasons to feel hurt, and then they reacted, which caused more problems. So let's try to repair this. Let's see what they do. I'm get, we're almost at the end of the episode, so I'm guessing we're gonna have to wait till next week to see any kind of resolution. These are awesome. I'm so embarrassed to be fighting in front of my friend. So I'm just out of here. Ed really pisses me off. You actually know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's obviously hurt. And that interview, I'm guessing, takes place weeks, if not months later. So I think she is hurt. And that makes sense. I think he's also hurt as well. And uh, I think they have different ways of communicating about that. Uh, but, okay, let, let me go down a road of that I'm guessing people would be curious about. So let's say that Ed has a personality problem, that there's something deeply or significantly wrong with his personality, whether it's narcissism or empathy problems or something like that. I don't know. Uh, there's no way for me to know. Sometimes I can kind of make some very tentative speculations about people on the show with Ed. Well, I feel like with Ed, I did start making some conceptualizations around self-centeredness 
uh, at least a couple seasons ago, the way that he approaches things, the superficiality that he seems to exhibit, the the rigidness, the superiority that he exhibits. So I guess this falls in line with that, that when they were having some tension, which wasn't necessarily caused by him, but he eventually resorts to full cold-hearted rejection and uh, and acting like the other person doesn't matter and also leaning into things that look good to the outside or particularly one person you know so i guess it does fall in line with that which you could imagine she liz might have run into frequently and this is just another example of that and how that would compound the hurt for her this is <sighs> All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.